Do you remember the Shuttle brand? They made mini PCs in the early 2000s, barebone kits, and these are retro friendly. We have Socket A, PCI, HEP, as well as a floppy drive. So there's a lot we can do. We are going to install Windows XP and Windows 98. Well, the plan is to install Windows XP and Windows 98. I ran into quite a few issues, but most of them I was able to resolve. So yeah, let's start at the beginning. Thank you, Dominic, for the donation and sending this computer to the channel. I really appreciate it. So the machine arrived fairly well packed. And the first thing I do is, yeah, make sure it's working. So. I'm connecting it to the power, to the VGA monitor, and also a wireless keyboard and mouse. This computer has onboard graphics, so initially that's what we're starting with. I'm actually curious, when you get new hardware, do you test it first, or do you spend some time first cleaning it, replacing thermal paste, and stuff like that? Because I produce content, I really need to make sure that the machine works initially, so my first step is always turning it on and making sure it's actually working. The computer fired up just fine, but I can see a couple of issues straight away. The first thing is none of the storage devices are detected. We're getting an error about the floppy drive as well. I also noticed that the clock speed and the, the, the bus speed was very low and it wouldn't save the BIOS settings, but that's likely just a flat CMOS battery. The machine works, so let's take a closer look. We have an optical drive, floppy drive, power button, reset button. This is the power LED, hard drive activity LED. Then we have digital out. This is an optical port, microphone and headphone ports, two USB 2 ports and firewire. We have more ports at the back and I must say, this is really a decked out machine. We have dual VGA outputs. Here goes the power. This is a S-video slash composite output, serial port, two firewire ports, two USB 2 ports. This is ethernet. I believe this is fast ethernet, but it might be gigabit ethernet, not quite sure. Two PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. And here we have microphone, line in and line out. And here, two expansion slots. This one is for HEP. You can only use single slot video cards. And here, PCI. The machine had one gigabyte of RAM with two modules, 512 megabytes each. In the machine, I found a good old PCI dial-up modem. I have no need for it, so it had to go. In terms of specifications, we have an Athlon XP 2800 Plus. The chipset is from NVIDIA, it's an Enforce 2, and it comes with integrated graphics, a GeForce 4 MX. So the next step is opening the unit and having a look inside. And I could see, well, there is no storage, and that's fine with privacy, and I have lots of storage lying around anyway. But I also noticed that the ribbon cables were detached uh, to the optical drive and to the floppy drive, as well as the power cables. But yeah, that's all fairly straightforward to figure out. Now for storage, this machine doesn't have SATA, so we're using the good old StarTech ID to SATA adapter. And at first I used a 120 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. I also replaced the BIOS battery and then, yeah, all the drives were detected, the optical drive, connected to the secondary IDE channel and then also the SSD to the primary channel. I was able to access the BIOS, load the BIOS defaults and now all the settings, the machine would remember all the BIOS settings. And yeah, I go through my usual uh, settings, make sure it boots from the optical drive first and yeah, basically everything I leave at default. And now it's time to install Windows XP. Having the optical drive makes this step really straightforward. It installed without any issues. And then next I install the drivers with a USB hard drive. Snappy driver installer origin is first. I love that tool. What it does is it probes the hardware and has this huge database of drivers. It automatically installs all the drivers. And yeah, after a reboot, got a nice desktop, full resolution, everything is working. Fine, and now it's time to test a few benchmarks. 
But then after a reboot, I got an error about some missing file. So yeah, I couldn't resolve it. I tried restoring the previous working known configuration. That didn't work. So I rebooted from the Windows XP disk again, tried to install it, but now I would get a blue screen. So yeah, in the end, it turns out the SanDisk SSD must have died or something, not quite sure what's going on, but I replaced it for a 500 gigabyte crucial SSD and now everything works. So yeah, off to the races, installing XP again, drivers, benchmarks, everything. And here, the next issue, we can see some flickering. So this is running 3 Mark, and I also tried the AquaMark benchmark, same issue. And it turned out, don't use the latest NVIDIA video driver, use something older. I'm using version 4223. This is the same version that the community uh, yeah, decided to, to declare the best Windows 98 driver. And it also works great under Windows XP. We have some results. In 3 Mark, we're getting 4,422 and in AquaMark, 8,304. So the integrated GeForce 4MX is not the highest performing video card. Let's give it a better GPU. This is the GeForce 4 TI4200. I have upgraded the cooler, so it doesn't quite fit into the machine when you cover, when you close the cover, but uh, the performance checks out. You just have to find a single slot version of this card. After I installed the dedicated GeForce, I noticed at the post screen that the RAM speed is now running at 400 megahertz. So um, maybe because of the onboard graphics, it actually reduced the clock speed of the RAM. I'm using the same drivers, version 43.23, and the results are much better. In 3 Mark, we're getting now 11,307. That's a nice boost from 4,422. And in AquaMark also 15,375. That's also much better than the 8,304 that we saw before. And now let's run a few games. So Screamer 4x4. This is a open world off-road racing game. We have played this before on the channel and yeah, runs silky smooth on the machine. I'm running at 1024 by 768. This is the version from GOG. It's DRM free. Just install it under XP. You don't need anything extra. There are three executables in the game folder, one for Glide, one for OpenGL, one for Direct 3D. NVIDIA is really good with OpenGL, so that's the version I chose. I maxed out all the details. In the driver, I've enabled an isotropic filtering. I think 8x is the highest the driver lets me use. And yeah, the game runs perfectly fine. As for the game, I'm realizing this game is actually really difficult. I have not been able to progress much in the championship. And in most racing games, they usually start off quite easy. At least you uh, get some sense of, 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 of achievement, but here it's really brutal. The first track, yeah, I've sort of memorized all the gates and I'm getting a good time, but then it gets a little bit harder. So I guess I just need more practice and really memorize the location of all the gates. Insane is next. This is another open world off-road racing game out of Hungary. And uh, I've introduced that in a recent video. I've played it a little bit more. I wasn't too impressed with, the, with having to play capture the flag against uh, computer opponents. I find that a bit boring. And in, in the championship, you can sort of pick the races that you want to do. The first one is uh, where you need to make it through gates really quickly. So that's fun. And then you can also do yeah, traditional circuit racing, but I don't like the capture the flag stuff. Um, I've almost made it through the first um, championship level, so to speak. And yeah, on this machine, it runs well. The physics are really well done. The suspension and everything that's playing really, really well. And yeah, also if this game is on special, absolutely put it in your in your uh, checkout and buy it. The main game for this video is Medal of Honor Allied Assault. This is a huge game. So Medal of Honor, that's a huge franchise. This game launched in 2002 by 2015 Incorporated. That's the development studio. 
It's a World War II first-person shooter. I vividly remember playing this back in the day. I was a little bit cheeky. Back in the day, you could go to a video rental, a DVD a video store, and uh, yeah, rent PC games. And of course, yeah, I would uh, rent it for one day and make a copy and then continue playing it. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, now, of course, you know, uh, you can buy it uh, online. I've got the GOG version, DRM free, installed without any issues on this machine. Do go into the options. There are video options, then also advanced options, crank up all the details. We have uh, AF, 8x AF in the driver, and also the audio settings, change it to high details. The game ran perfectly fine in terms of performance. I don't, I don't see any complaints. I think this runs at 60 FPS locked with maybe a few slowdowns here and there. Um, I'm finding it a little bit challenging. Maybe it's because I'm older, my reaction time is not that great. And also I'm playing through a capture computer. So yeah, there's a bit of latency uh, in there. Those are my excuses for yeah, struggling a little bit. Uh, in the beginning, you help uh, a prisoner escape and then you've got uh, a teammate but I kept putting him into difficult situations and he kept dying. But the game automatically saves and you have quick save. So it, it, it's not too difficult. After a few tries, I was able to figure out what to do. The GOG release also includes the two expansion packs. So once you've played uh, Allied Assault and you are comfortable with the game, well, two more expansions await you and Definitely, this is a game I would also pick up, recommend uh, playing it. If you've played it before, maybe your memory uh, is a little bit foggy with the storyline. At least that's how it goes for me, uh, even old movies. After, after many, many years, I, I, I sort of remember what it's about, but the details escape me. So you can definitely replay these games and have a blast. So yeah, Medal of Honor Allied Assault gets the thumbs up. It's another fantastic old game to play. I had no issues under Windows XP with stability or anything like that. It was silky smooth. Only when running CPU set, the machine would lock up, but I'm pretty sure that's just the wrong version. Um, and I guess trying a few other versions would solve that issue. But all in all, Windows XP experience was beautiful. And now it's time to test Windows 98. 500 gigabytes is way too large for Windows 98. So we are downsizing the SSD for a SanDisk with 32 gigabytes. One gigabyte of RAM is also too much for Windows 98. There are patches out there, but I wanna keep everything out of the box. So the solution is easy, removing one stick and we have 512 megabytes of RAM, which is perfect for Windows 98. Windows 98 installed without any difficulties. Again, really easy because we have a floppy drive and an optical disk drive. Now with the drivers, so I went to the NVIDIA website and yes, there is a Windows 98 driver for the Nforce 2 chipset. I was really pleased to see that and it installed without any difficulties. It installs all the devices in one go. So that's the, the audio chip, the chipset, but also ethernet. For the graphics, we still have the dedicated NVIDIA GeForce 4 Ti. Again, we're using the same 42.23 drivers, which are known to work really well under Windows 98. And yeah, that worked fine. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. In 3 Mark 2000, we're getting 14,313 points. And then I'm testing GL Quake, one of the games I really like to benchmark. And we are looking at the resolution scaling. Look at that, 640 by 480, almost 700 FPS, that's unreal. And even at 1600 by 1200, we're getting 180 FPS. Beautiful performance. Expendable also runs silky smooth at the lower resolutions. We're a little bit CPU limited, but in all resolutions, we're getting over 140 FPS. Absolutely beautiful. I ran the ATTO disk benchmark and here a little bit of a surprise. We are getting around 30 megabytes of data transfer. This is lower than what I expected. Maybe under Windows 98, the storage driver locks the system at UDMA 30 speeds or something like that. Not quite sure what's going on. Still, in the end, it's enough performance and I did go into the device manager 
and enabled DMA mode just to be sure. I wanted to test another game under Windows 98. This is Draken, but unfortunately we're getting a hard system lockup um, yeah, within just moments into the game. So what are my thoughts? In terms of the hardware, there's a lot of good news for retro gaming. Socket A, we have PCI, we have AGP, optical disk drive, floppy drive. Yeah, what else do you want? And even PS2 at the back. And uh, you saw we could upgrade the graphics card and that gives us all sorts of options. You can uh, go for something that is high performance under Windows XP with DirectX 9 or a video card that is more compatible with Windows 98. You have all the options. As most mini PCs, well, they're really small. Everything is crammed together. So working with it can be a little bit awkward like installing the RAM or installing the hard drive. And to remove the drive cage, I haven't quite figured out how to do that, but I'm sure there's some online documentation out there. If I find any online resources, I will put them down below in the video description. The performance is also nice with a Athlon XP 2800 plus. Well, that's plenty of performance under the hood. And yeah, with the HEP slot, you can upgrade the graphics, maybe even one that uses a dedicated power connector. The power supply has only got around 200 to 250 watts. So keep that in mind. That might be the uh, constraint of that machine. The experience under Windows XP was beautiful. I didn't have any issues apart from that little hiccup in CPU set, but I'm pretty sure a different version will work just fine. Under Windows 98, very interesting to see the Enforce drivers being supplied by Nvidia. That's new, I wasn't aware of that. So maybe that gives me something to look at in future videos. Not quite sure what's going on with the storage. Why are we getting only around 30 megabytes a second? And also not sure what happened with that uh, computer locking up in Draken. But the other benchmarks completed, so maybe it's just a driver chipset version conflict. And usually when you try a different and older or newer version, very often that solves such issues. I didn't have a chance to test DOS because I simply ran out of time. Now I've been told that the Enforce chipsets are not that recommended for DOS. The PCI slots are not very friendly with DOS compatible PCI sound cards. But if you know something more about that topic, please let me know. I can definitely do a future video where we can test this computer with DOS compatibility. So yeah, all in all, this was a fun project. These shuttle mini PCs, yeah, they're really interesting, retro friendly. There are so many options, so many configurations you could go with and so many operating systems you can install. So uh, a lot of flexibility and I really enjoyed the project. A lot of things, yeah, some things did go wrong, but I was able to overcome most of them and maybe there was some nugget of information in there for you as well. So have you had a shuttle back in the day? Did you know about them? Was that something you were interested in? Let me know down below in the video comments. And that's it. If you found this video interesting, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure your notifications are enabled and you click on all. So you're making sure to get all the updates. And that's it for this video. Leave your thoughts down below and I shall see you soon with another one.